welcome my tyb students you are welcome you have taken very good decision to select english as a special subject definitely you have taken a very good decision once you have taken in fib when you opted for optional english subject and now after studying for two long years you have chosen again the tyba english subject definitely while studying english definitely you will come to understand that you have taken a very good decision your language proficiency your english will improve your english communication will improve it will definitely impact on your personality so and job opportunity there are so many benefits that you will get in learning english so english is the language of the world and it's a international communication language it will help you to understand what is happening at the moment around the world so english is going to benefit you it is very much uh, say the communication it is very much important for your personal development so english is ultimately going to benefit you all so we are going to study our syllabus the pre scan syllabus we are still waiting for the university to to curtail some of the portions some of the part of our syllabus near about 20% 30% by the university but it is not our say and our control it is university officials to decide on and to work on but irrespective of this decision we have to begin our academic term university has declared that 7th of august is the college opening date all the teaching should go on. so we must be ready for the academic activities we have done very good job while adopting new technology you should be habitual with the new technology there are so many applications that are available in the market and under these covid 19 related conditions it is extremely useful for the students to adapt to develop the skill and adopt some innovative teaching uh, methods in the current technical modern changing world technology is progressing we have lots of applications communication applications whatever means are there for communication purposes we are using these communication tools google classroom youtube channels zoom applications recording on the audio files recording on whatsapp recording on zoom app or other such a teaching uh, related apps all means of communication will be useful for the students and for the teachers to improve the communication we are going to use these communication tools after the covid 19 conditions the world entire world may change there will be drastic change in pre covid 19 conditions and after or post covid 19 conditions there are so many changes that you will be reflected around all sectors in each and every field and it is unforgettable ever say incident and for unforgettable conditions that the covid 19 has brought around the world it is not the education the only sector that has been impacted but every sector every life every part of every side of life are affected by this covid conditions 
So irrespective of that, the education must go. The academic year is changed, no doubt. But it should not hamper the entire education process. There are so many applications that we are using. You will be taught through YouTube channel. You will be taught through Zoom applications, some audio files, some video files. And what has been discussed will be shared through the note forms. Means you will be provided notes. These notes that you will handle, you will read. And if you feel any problem in understanding the content of our syllabus, you can freely chat me on WhatsApp. WhatsApp is media. Telegram is communication applications. WhatsApp and communicate, uh, Telegram, both applications are useful for us. We have prepared groups. And these groups are definitely the groups that are useful for our communication purposes. Those students who have smartphones, they can use this smartphone. If some of the students may not be in a uh, financial condition to purchase the smartphone, don't worry about that. Don't insist on the smartphone use. Don't insist on your parents either. Don't demand. Do not panic. We are ready to help you out. We are going to provide you reading material. If it is not possible to get the reading material through WhatsApp, then you will get it Xerox copies. So don't panic. Don't think that you are going to lose. Be confident. All our subjects will be taught in the coming days. And definitely we are going to study this communication. And what we are going to study in our syllabus. We have to discuss about that. So TYBA English students, they have to think about the syllabus. The syllabus that has been introduced in 2018 and 19. The syllabus that is prescribed for us is in the semester pattern. Optional English first in SYB, your study paper number third, second and third, second Indian English literature, third American literature. Now, in paper number fourth, the students will study the 16th to 18th century literature. Okay. And how this, see this pattern, paper number 4th, 16th to 18th century, paper 1, and paper 4th, second paper. In paper number 5, you will learn some critical theories, some theoretical approaches in literary criticism paper. It's in fifth semester paper number first and in sixth semester paper number second in paper number six you have options definitely a b c grammar and art of writing is a very valuable and very good paper that you will study okay and this paper is also useful for the students grammar of course we are study, going to study the grammar and art of writing it's very useful for the days to come okay so art of writing is very good topic okay so 
we are going to study in detail okay paper number seven okay the 19th century literature and see 19th century literature you will study some syllabus okay that we are going to study in detail okay paper number eight 20th century literature british literature paper number first and second in paper number nine you are going to study this b option drama and theater paper number first and second in both semester okay so this literary of course english language study means the study of english literature it's often the confusion the argument and the debate goes on between the two critics and two theorists whether language is necessary to study the literature and whether literature is necessary to study the language the tussle the arguments often goes on but we can think that to study the language is to study the literature to study the literature is to study the language because in literature we have finest expression of language language is a tool means to express our emotions and feelings our passions our interest and that is what language is useful for literature and literature expresses the emotions feelings and imagination and everything so it is necessary for the students who are the students of english to study the literature both are complementary to each other your english gets improved when you study literature because literature in literature you have finest expression very good use of sentences very good use of vocabularies rich type of language is used in literature and various a uh, very different stylistic features that you will find in literature and that is what literature is useful for language studies and language is best and finest expression in literature that is what in coming on to our semester fifth syllabus in paper number fourth reads the unit first important concepts in terms i request all the students to get acquainted with the syllabus first what we are going to study there are so many oh, professors who will be working on these types of say videos video lectures and you will definitely will come to know that these videos are by all means useful for the benefit of the learning and for the students in paper number 6 unit first you have important concepts and terms we have elizabethan age elizabethan age that began from 15 to 1603 during the queen elizabeth ruled in to the british throne so unit first we have two options a and b sections we have elizabethan age what are the socio political changes that occurred in the age as a political concept at the same time the what are the social and 
literary influences that find expression in the literature. Literature is an expression of the time. Literature brings out the very authentic and true picture of the social conditions of the age, of the era. And that is what we have renaissance in this, in this particular period in England. And this renaissance is reflected in the poetry. At the same time, some renaissance features are reflected in dramas. Whatever prose writing that brings out the renaissance features, what are the features of renaissance that you will have to study in here? Humanism, renaissance is also called as humanism or humanism is called as renaissance. But humanism that we have to study during this period, what are the reformation that has taken place? So we are going to study that. Some finest expression of poetry. There are a new technique that has evolved in the form of sonnet, okay? Sonnet originated in Italy, but brought in England by Earl of Surrey, okay? And whatever Elizabethan sonnet that we have to study, epic, epic is written, pastoral poetry is also written in this period. Elizabethan drama, uh, you know, Shakespeare, Ben Johnson, in the city weeds. These are major dramatists contributed a great deal. And we have seen there is a very remarkable person that is known as all over the world is William Shakespeare. When we ask a question to the Britishers, what do you have? They can only say, we have William Shakespeare. Okay, just think about that. So, well, we have Elizabethan drama, University of Weeds. Then section B, Jacobean period in 1603 to 1650. And during this period, James II ruled to the British throne. And we are going to study these features, okay? Characteristics of Jacobean period. What are the major influences and impact that is reflected on literature? This period also seen one of the major remarkable poet in the form of John Donne, his metaphysical poetry. So we have very finest expression in metaphysical poetry. So metaphysical poetry is going to be studied in this. Okay. Then we have Jacobian drama. Okay, unit second is William Shakespeare's Hamlet, and we have another option that is comedy of errors. For in second unit third, as we have studied in the terms, some poetry has been selected from the Elizabethan period, and some of the poetry has been selected from Jacobin period. So two sonnets by Sir Philip Sidney, the poem of 14 lines, taken from Astrophil and Stella, sonnet number 37 and 39. Okay, these are very famous sonnets. Edmund Spencer, we have very good example in the Shepherd's calendar. These three or uh, two poems that we are going to study. William Shakespeare is also innovative in sonnet writing. So we are going to study sonnet 116 and 138. Okay, let me not the marriage of two minds I admit impediments. And when my love swears that she is made of truth. So these two sonnets by William Shakespeare, we are going to study Jacobin period. Let me introduce to the Jacobin period also. John Dunn, Malediction Forbidden Morning. It's very good example, remarkable poem under the metaphysical poetry. Holy Sonnet, Death Be Not Proud is also one of the very good sonnet. George Herbert is fully love. These two poems we are going to study. This is another metaphysical poet. And Marvel, coronate and on a dew, drop of dew. 
Andrew Marvel is also one of the metaphysical poet that we are going to study. So for semester six, we have to skip this part. Okay, directly we will move on to the next part. Okay, and here these are if you download this syllabus, you will get the list of reference books as you have seen. In paper number fifth, you have literary criticism. Okay. Literary criticism as you as a student, as a student of English, I want my students to go through these course objectives first because as a student if you memorize and internalized these objectives in your mind in your soul spirit and if you from your part try to achieve these objectives what the board of studies has aimed for definitely you will be a very great person very talented person of english literature to introduce the learners to the important critical concepts terms to make them aware of the nature and function of literature and criticism to impart the technique of close reading of literary texts to enable students to understand various literary theories and critical approaches to familiarize the learners with the tenets of practical criticism and what is the expected outcome that is also written there okay so to develop the knowledge of literary theories because literature never comes out there are some kind of tendencies there are few writing strategies these writing strategies are implemented these writing strategies certain trains approaches are the base for the writer for the author to write on some theories are there and using these theories the literature springs up certain tendencies just like as we have seen Aristotle, suppose just take an example of an Aristotle. Aristotle has written Mimesis, Poetics. His theory book, Poetics, is the first remarkable book that is useful for all the readers and all the writers. So Aristotle is for this for this contribution is recognized for as a, a father of literary criticism because we are going to study when we study these say features in second chapter okay you will come to understand that what is the remarkable contribution that aristotle has made in unit first in systematic study of our syllabus you have the first term simile imagery symbol paradox ambiguity and myth these major uh, say terms are selected then in unit second you have nature and function of literature this is very interesting topic. What is the nature of literary, literature? How literature comes out? With what intentions? What is the expected function of literature? So right from the Plato and Aristotle's debate, so many theorists over the period of history has come down and these uh, theorists contributed a great deal as per their 
lineage, as per their tendencies, as per their inclinations, they have written certain theories. These theories are known by their dissertations. So Aristotle is very famous for that. Literature and imagination. Again, we have as per the nature and basic idea of literature, we have variety of theories in the romantic idea of imagination we have romantic concept of literature it means what is romantic romantic means it doesn't mean romance love no it stands for the use of emotions feelings imagination mystery reason dream sequences it's imaginary it goes into far world of imagination so literature springs out it gives importance to human imagination feelings and that is what it's an expression of soul it's expression of personality and that is the romantic concept of literature that we are going to study at the same time what is the function functions of literature what is expected by writing the literature poetry novels if there are other media what is the function of literature so to give the pleasure to develop the senses to develop the sensitivity to look through a certain beautiful say eyes towards the literature it's beautiful one to praise for its distant quality aesthetic quality beautiful quality that makes this as a aesthetic concept of literature then literature is a written for moral concept means with the aim of moral teaching literature is used to teach the society in which it is produced to bring forth the good and evil things good and bad things and put in in the platform of a society let the readers judge what is good what is bad the bad should be repelled and good should be adopted so it's a moral function to teach the society the moral then cognitive functions are also there imaginary or cognitive functions then in the third we are going to study the the nature and function of literary criticism nature of literary criticism is as we know how literary criticism how the theories what is the aim and what is the function of literary criticism why it should be studied why it is important so we have to study the functions of literary criticism we have explication the criticism the, or the critics helps us to interpret the literary text say a poem a drama novel an essay to interpret in a better way the critics exposes through their explanation to the variety of critical concepts variety of beautiful things that is impregnated by the author in the literary text so we have to study that so explication is one of the function of literary criticism and we have analysis okay critics helps us to analyze or teaches it uh, they gives us a training to analyze the literary text in what way the text is to be analyzed 
what are the distinctive features how we had to understand and come to the proper interpretation and then judge the value of the work the value of the author in what way if where he is perfect where he is imperfect in what way he has put these things in a beautiful way very uh, relevantly at the same time is very symbolical and where he has lacunas where he has made the mistakes where the author has gone wrong what are the stylistic and language and other related things that he has missed so analysis helps us in that to interpret me to come at a right interpretation interpretation is also a function of literary criticism we can judge the value that is evaluation evaluation of each and everything at the same time certain books are innovative in the way they are innovative in their theory they are innovative in their certain type of writing as you know as you know um, william faulkner's sound and fury is a very good novel it is stylistically Uh, written in a different way and it is a new and innovative technique that he has used stream of consciousness that he has used okay by writing the monologue of four characters in the sound and fury so the novel helps us to theorize okay to put the theory in this way this can be read so theory or a poem is written in this way so there is some theory of writing poetry writing novel drama or essay or any kind of a literary work of art in unit 4 we are going to study the practical criticism scansion okay scansion needs the understanding of sounds okay so there are so many things that we have base meter variations and their rhyme stanzas are where is the stress mark and where is not what is cesura okay and all the basic concepts that are related to the classification okay for the sixth semester we are not going to be uh, uh say serious we are not going to be serious about that because we are going to study it in second semester okay means how things unravel that we have to wait for okay in paper number 6 we have grammar and art of writing okay it is very interesting at the same um, process of word formation transformation we are going to study the sounds and stress patterns where the stress comes down where the stress goes up okay how the stress impact the meaning of the words so we are going to study here to develop among them the insight into the structure of english language and to provide the knowledge of the rules of the grammar to help them learn grammatical analysis we have not we have grammatical analysis how the sentence is made of okay and i would like to tell you understand the students that it's a journey okay remember it's a journey from the minimal pairs means the smallest meaningful unit of language that is you will see morphology morphology means smallest meaningful unit smallest unit of grammar we are going to begin with morphology and a small part of language to the largest part of language that is sentence so our throughout our journey from the first semester throughout the year say academic year we are going to study morphology words phrases clauses and then sentences at the end of the academic year so it is our journey from the smallest meaningful units to the largest unit of language so to begin with morphology we are going to study uh, since last two years phonetics is another topic that has been introduced by the mumbai university thanks to them because students of uh, 
BA or graduated students are unaware of uh, these phonetic of sounds and symbols. Phoneme, phoneme and its distinctive features. English vowels, see phonetics means the study of sounds. Phonology means science of or study of sounds. Sounds, we have vowel sounds, we have consonant sounds. Then we have the sounds that are, because English is not our language. British has ruled over India. And during this rule, British has brought English language to India with a Macaulay's dispatch. As you know, in 1857, Macaulay the dispatch is very famous okay and with Macaulay's dispatch English has been adopted as the language of learning language of teaching in universities and colleges the student must remember that in 1857 these well-known three universities have been formed, established. University of Mumbai, that is our university, University of Calcutta, and University of Madras. So, 1857, this, uh, this dispatch is to give and to quench the Indians who are protesting against the British in 1857, you know the revolt okay atrashe satavanna cha uthav manun aplyala itihasamade pahayla milto manun bhartiyanna kahi tari ya uthav jhalyanantra kahi tari deun karun shanti gedaycha santvan gedaycha manun atrashe satavanna made mekoli cha dispatch ne bhartiya lokanna shikshan denacha ani to shikshan denyasathi mekoli ne prastav jo amerike um, jo in Rizancha Sansade Made Manla Ta Ta Mekole Jata Ta Kaida Zo that's a bass girl no hippony coop as no post colonial drustikunatun coop matwasa bass the jar who shook to Hutoi Kilai Zatoi Mununtani Martian Adani Samazlo Tanatnan Nahiye Tana English are Kabashi Zudnan Mirala Hover, Jagat Zudnan Mirala Hover, Munun Burras Kaitani, Sons of the Made Mandlo, and it took Adam and Durkurungito. When JJ Killer Punapum, as a student of English, we must thank the British government because they brought the language to the India. They gave us language, English language. And that is what, okay, they brought the tool that we fought against with them We're using this British language. As you know, language awakened the first generation of freedom fighters in India. Motilal Nehru. Other well acquainted, well educated Indians in 19th century were fighting where their minds were awakened to the revolutions that were happening around the world russian revolution american revolution french revolution and other such revolutions they are aware russo voltaire okay then abraham lincoln these uh, leaders of these so-called world were there and these uh, say the leaders brought their changed mind changed opinion and they were feeling that India is also suffering India is also suffering under the rule of Britishers so they become hookal they tried to protest and like this the indian revolution has 
developed okay so we have to thank them that the tool that they gave us we fought with this tool okay so for the things that we have to study okay we have diphthong consonant clusters transcription using phonetic script okay then we have morphology allomorphs vowel mutation for free and bound morphemes okay root and stem inflection and derivation morphological analysis that we are going to study grammar unit 2 from grammar words and phrases open word classes noun adjectives verbs and adverbs closed word classes pronouns determiners so as we have started we are going to study words then we are going to study phrases types of phrases okay genitive prepositional adjective adverb and verb phrases then the third is dedicated to art of writing this cross analysis this two okay then mechanics of writing that we are going to study okay so this is the paper question paper pattern okay that we are going to study our second semester syllabus that we are going to study later on so we are not going to consider here okay so you will find the reference books given under the paper okay then there is another paper translation studies we don't have translation studies we are not going to study it okay if you are adept you are prepared you can choose okay there is another optional that is popular culture and this is the syllabus for the popular culture okay then film and literature is another paper that you have the options okay what is the relation between film and literature how literature is reflected in films okay so film and literature this is and so one of the bigger another topic that you have the next paper is 19th century literature okay this is the syllabus and the main objectives of the paper okay there are romantic and victorian eras see here romantic and victorian eras okay so um, we are going to study the romantic era okay see this paper as we know we have romantic era in the first semester and victorian era in the next semester okay so romantic era is said to began in 1798 with the publication of william wordsworth's lyrical ballads and up to 1832 why because from 1832 queen victoria came to the british throne that is victorian era so we have that romanticism as a reaction to the neoclassicism influence of rousseau and french revolution survey of literature novel poetry influence rise of women writers in the period concepts are there romantic features okay romantic imagination german transcendentalism gothic revival medievalism and pantheism these are the terms that we are going to study in the romantic period okay see in unit number second we are going to study poetry selected from romantic period william blake a divine image human abstract songs of experience and songs of innocence but it's very remarkable book all the english students and poetry lovers will find this william blake's poetry it's a very remarkable and fantastic book that is the student uh, or the teachers must just uh, or a teacher should have in their own library so so william blake william wordsworth lines 
written in early spring, you see great poems, Seymour, Taylor, Coleridge, Kubla Khan, Lord Byron's Darkness, P.V. Shady's Ozymandias, John Keats is also one of the say, romantic, great romantic poet. Okay. In a third, Jane Austen's Emma, or we have option, Charles Dickens' essays. Okay. These are the essays that William Hazlitt's. William Hazlitt, who is also one of the essayist from the Romantic era. So we have this oh, Romantic. In the second semester, we have Victorian period. Okay. So in this uh, way, you do have this type of a see oh, literature and uh, the papers that we are going to study. Still, we have two more papers to study. I think uh, it's an introduction to your syllabus, introduction to your TYBA papers. It is extremely necessary because without introduction, the student cannot, or the professors cannot move on to the directly teaching of our syllabus. Okay. So it is better to get acquainted with the syllabus first. So that is oh, that is the main task and main objective in front of me. There are still two more papers to uh, go through and acquaint with. Okay. So I will do it in the next video. Okay. So oh, here we have to stop here. Uh, see you do watch this video at the same time oh uh, i will start again in the next video the rest of the two papers okay and till then bye thank you